Hey, welcome back to the Survive Scale Soar podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy. And remember, this show comes in two formats. We have Real Talk, which is just me and the mic talking about what's happening in our world and how that relates to your business. The second format is Success Talks. That's where I get to interview some of the top people in their respected industry, and they share with you what has made them successful in their journey. And today is a Success Talk. I have as our guest, Owen Video. He is a growth, an award-winning growth, YouTube growth strategist, and he is also a high-performance coach and owner of Acceleratus Media. Owen, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I, I'm really excited about this. We were, we were talking just before we, we had started the show. You and I really don't know each other. Uh, we're friends on Facebook. Sure. And... You know, some of those, it's amazing what those social media platforms do and the connections they have when you just stay in touch with people. And so, oh, oh I'm, yeah. I'm oh, honest. yeah. Yeah. So tell, tell us about your journey. How did you become Owen Video? Yeah, well, I, you know, obviously Owen Video is not my real name. You know, uh, they changed our last name when we came over on Ellis Island. You know, this is tail off and told. It started with my great grandfather, Owen Newspaper. And when he when he crossed, they 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 changed it to to Owen Video. Um, but I actually I gave myself that that name some years ago because um, video is the only thing that I have ever done professionally. Uh, it's been 13 years um, that I've been a video professional, and even before that, like in, in my hot, I was a waiter. I had my my hobbies were making video in in the the back room, and so it wasn't until you you know I had decided that I was not made for the workforce um, that I started a video marketing company. And what I did was this was probably two thousand and eight um, ish, and YouTube was the new kid on the block. I think the hottest video at this time was the uh, evolution of dance guy um, was was sort of the big thing around this this era. And so I grabbed my video camera and I wore a fishing vest because a fishing vest, I, I put a bunch of film and stuff in there. And even though we weren't using film, a lot of the business owners were older and they recognized film. They knew what that was, right? So I walked in and I had this video look to me, right? And I said, I will do a video for you right now for $20. And they'd say, oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Can you come back tomorrow? I'll do my hair. I'll have my cousin come. And I'd say, I'll come back tomorrow. <clears throat> for a hundred bucks. And that, that was my pitch, man. And I made a hundred thousand dollars my very first year in business and uh, brought my wife home from work. And then, you know, one day I was just like, you know, I'm going to change our, our name to Owen video and we're going to build the best video marketing uh, programs for business owners who have a powerful message. And that's, that's what we've been doing ever since. That's awesome. At 20 and a hundred bucks a video, that's a lot of video. We did so many. In fact, <clears throat> I believe it was 17 in one day that I was in La Jolla, San Diego, and I was like knocking on doors. I mean, that's what I knocked on doors. Like you go to a business park and you just go into the store. And and there were some people that didn't want to talk to me, but lar video was real popular back then. And so walking in with a video camera in my hand, it got a lot of people going like, hey, what's going on? What's this all about? You know, and at 20 bucks. I was spending all my time editing, and so I hired a guy at school, and and then I had him going out and offering the same thing, and uh, eventually we moved into coaching, and YouTube has always been our platform. I have gone viral on YouTube multiple times on multiple different channels, not, not just me, the clients I help. Um, we've also generated millions of dollars on, on YouTube through product sales and through um, business, you know, business coaching sale, like people that have services to provide. Um, it's a wonderful industry and lives are being changed by it. And I'm thrilled. Like every day is just like, I can't believe I get to do this, you know? Yeah. And I think you're going to be able to answer this, this next question. I'm pretty sure you will. Why video? Like you got a lot of small business owners. I get to work with small business owners, a lot of real estate agents, probably 80% of the people that I coach. Yeah. Same are here. Real estate agents and you know, about 20% are, are other small business owners. And there's there's this avoidance to video. So why why video? Well, I think that people are avoiding video because we as, and we have been watching TV since we were kids. And TV has always been a very constructed environment. 
Uh, everyone's prim, you know, prim and proper and, and, and every line is, is perfect. And then, you know, YouTube got big and for a while it was about cat videos and sort of weird, you know, like I filmed this in my basement type stuff. Lord knows I was doing plenty of that stuff in the, in the early days. I made a ton of sketch comedy videos. Comedy is me quote son like com comedy is my heart like if I, I you know if i could be doing my sister's a stand up i used to write sketch and uh we take a lot of that into our videos but uh then the rise of youtube right zach king and peter mckinnon and all these mr beast and like it kind of went back to that prim and proper everyone is so tightly edited and they have these big uh, teams and 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 uh, uh you know big sponsors corporate sponsors and so we're kind of back to that place where it's like video is great i'd love to do video but i wouldn't be good at video or who would watch me i think is the big uh, uh objective but you know the the issue is see my clients are not like that my clients are like dude i'm the bomb you know i'm the bomb and more people need to know about me right like we have real estate agents same thing with you it's maybe not 80%, it's maybe like 70% of our business, 60% of our business, real estate. I've been working with real estate agents forever, right? Those were the doors that I would knock on, right? In, in those early days, it's realtors and brokers and uh, mortgage professionals. Um, and so there's a group that are like, hey, I'm, I'm ready. You know, Karen Carr was one of our clients. She's like the biggest name in, in realtor specific YouTube marketing. I trained her. I took her channel from 3,000 to 10,000 subscribers by following the same system um, that we were doing we were doing years ago. And so why video? Like, why would somebody watch you is because is why would someone buy from you? Why would, if no one would buy from you, well, then you had an argument for me. But the reality is you wake up every day and you go, there are people out there who want to talk to me. I believe the same thing is true. I believe that there are people there that you are positioned to uniquely help, not because of your professional skill set, but because of your personal uh, experiences and the charisma you bring to the to the table. You don't have to be a high energy charisma, but let's say that you're a, a, a Iraq war veteran, you're a real estate agent like that's huge. You know how many veterans uh, and military people want to buy from a brother? You know, let's say that you 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 are a real estate agent and your husband's a firefighter. His husband's a cop. Like, that's a unique perspective that people want to see. Let's say that you're a homeschooler or a mom of seven, right? Or or whatever, some ridiculous number. Like, I have four kids. People think that's ridiculous. Um, we moved to Utah, and it's like everybody has eight kids. So it's it's a it's a whole different different scenario. But it's that unique perspective. Maybe you're a plant based eater, like I am. So when I, when I do my videos, there's always sort of like a health component or you see me doing something health um, uh, centric in the video as sort of a sideline. If that's what people want to see. And if, if, if somebody's going to buy from you, then there's 10,000 more that would watch you on video. Whether or not you're funny, whether or not you're pretty, right? They want to hear from someone like them. So what, I, what I'm hearing is everybody has the opportunity to do this and they're going to be speaking to an audience that is niche. Yes. And, and YouTube provides that, that niche space, right? Right. And the strategy behind YouTube is how you, you know, who your niche is. That's the bullseye. Okay. But if you're going to hit the bullseye, you're, you, you know, aiming for the bullseye, you're going to hit a lot of the blue area surrounding it, right? So we teach our clients to aim for the blue area. Identify your core niche in the video verbiage. But when you, when you create a title, when you create a strategy, you want to be aiming for the wider market. So here's an example with real estate agents, right? We've got a real estate agent right now who's working at North Dallas, Texas, right? P place called Prosper, Salina, some really great properties out there, but people know about Dallas, right? They, they know about uh, Fort Worth, right? And so it's like, how do we bring attention to her business? And there's two strategies, right? Strategy number one is you got to have that core group of videos that's like going to walk your clients, the people that you meet at the Chamber of Commerce, uh, your dad gives you a referral, or, or, or how about like uh, the neighbor down the street uh, uh, sends a person your way. You want to have a core group of videos to send those people through an automated email process, right? And those should live on YouTube. They should be public on YouTube. But your, your primary delivery mechanism 
is email marketing. Is, is so you get introduced to somebody, you put them in your email list, and they get one video every you know every couple of days on like what it's like to work with me and how to buy, how many, how we look for homes and what our philosophy is. We walk our clients through that that whole process. Okay, that's not going to cause you to go viral. Oh, and when very I say viral, very intentional though, right? Super intentional. People. And and the views and the views that you get are 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 targeted views, right? These are people that they're going to watch the whole thing, right? Be, because it was you. Now that's one strategy, right? That's like your first two to three weeks in the program. Like you should make those videos. And then we want to make videos that reach a wider audience, the blue. And from within that audience, that's where your bullseyes are. That's where your, your home runs are. And so, you, you know, a great example of that is, um, uh, you, you, you know, up-leveling your content. So it's how to buy a home in Salina, Texas, right? Only appeals to those people, right? But what if you did a video called um, how to buy a home anywhere or how to buy a home anywhere without X, Y, Z? right? How to buy a home anywhere without paying full price. And you, in that video, say, you, hey, welcome to this video. I'm going to show you guys how to get a great price on any home anywhere in the country. Now, I, I am in the Dallas area, and I specialize in this small town above Dallas. And if you're out there and you need a real estate agent, I'm your guy. But in today's video, I want to talk to you about how we help our clients, you know, buy any, da, 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 da. and now you've got, you see where I'm going? Why yeah, casting, you, casting the net and pulling them into your target. That's exactly right. And that's what we do okay. with our client. We help them walk through that process. What video are you going to make this week? How are we going to call them to action? And um, and we walk through that process till you make six figures. So I think people, a lot of people, especially now, intuitively know video is extremely important to their business. Why do yeah. people choose not to do it? They don't, they're afraid to do it. Number one, um, they lot, okay. Here's the big thing that we talk about is so many people, and I'll tell you, real estate agents especially, they need something first before we can do the thing that matters, right? So it's like, I know I need to make videos, Owen, but first, I got to set up my office, right? Or I know I need to make videos, Owen, but first, uh, I, I gotta, I, I gotta get through the spring season, right? Spring's really busy season, but after that, you, you know. Um, and so we have to get to the core of that, of why they're not really, really starting. And the number one thing is, is, um, um, how do you, it's like unrealistic expectations. Like you think you need all this stuff when you don't, you, you really only need your mobile phone. Is, is that going to give you a competitive edge? No. Uh, a nicer camera will give you a competitive edge, but. Until you learn to deliver a message, right, into this phone, into this device that speaks to people, that gets them to stop scrolling and paying attention, that's more powerful than any fancy camera you'll ever buy, right? So what we do is we get, we get our clients focused on what matters. And your first step is messaging, right, is imagine this. Imagine that I go to YouTube. And I search for a video called how to stop a sink from leaking. What can you imagine is going on in my life that, <laughs> I, that I would need to search for such a video, right? Yeah. Chances are something in my house is leaking or broken. So when I go to YouTube and I, I look for how to fix a, a leaky sink and I see a video that's 25 minutes long, I'm like, I, I don't have time for that right? That video is maybe made for like a plumber or someone who's not in an emergency, right? I see a video that's three minutes long and I'm like, yes, I love it. And the thumbnail is a, is a picture of a guy um, like with his hand on the pipe, you know, like the wrench is on the pipe kind of thing. So I'm yep. highly tactical. Yeah. Highly tactical goes right to the point. Well, that's the video I'm probably going to watch and that's how real estate works. And it's like, what do they need to know right now, right? What's going on right now politically? Um, how about 
developmentally in the community, right? Like what new buildings are coming up? You know, I remember when in, in my town, Oceanside, California, a, a new shopping center was coming up. Like they took Ralph's down. And Ralph's is the grocery store. It's like Kroger. Um, they took Ralph's down and then it was empty. And then all of a sudden construction started and it was like, what's going there? Like this, like this was our, our Ralph's got taken down for this. Like, what is this? And there was nobody talking about it. I had to, I had to call a number who called, gave me a number who gave me a number to find out. You are the reporter of your town. Like what's being built at the, the fifth and vine or whatever, you, you know what I mean? That's the kind of thing that'll bring clients into your business. May not go viral, but it's going to bring clients into your business. Yeah, it's like the the hot new restaurant in the area, and everybody's like, you know, there's no web page for it yet, and you can't find it, but you know it's there, and you want some information on it. Like, build three, a video around it. Three Italian restaurants in Prosper, Texas, my town, USA, right? Like three great burgers in my town, USA, right? Or, or even, um, you get it, be the local reporter on your town. And then maybe once, twice a month, have some of these bigger videos that's maybe designed to reach uh, the 10,000 person audience, which might be a commentary on uh, uh, something the White House did, et cetera, et cetera. I love that. Now, is it, is it about the quality of the video? And I think you kind of talked to that a little bit, or is it about the quantity of videos that you have out there? You know, I think that quantity breeds quality. I do. I think that in the beginning, right, when you're when you're getting good at video, there's two things you have to get good at. Number one is creating a great video, right? Like you need to know how to open up a video, carry a viewer across the finish line to end the video, right? You need to know how to do that. But on the flip side, you also need a system, an assembly line for cranking out multiple videos a month. And that system cannot involve you for the most part, right? Like you, you're you not the one editing. You're not the one sort of uh, doing some of the tasky stuff. Now, you might be doing that at first, but it's not a long-term reality, right? Like you're going to make so much money from the videos coming in. Like you're going to want to hire out a Filipino or South American team to kind of like manage that thing for you so that you're shooting video and then handing it off to a system that works, right? Our clients tend to get there within three to six months. They get a couple sales coming in from video and it's like, boom, we hire this team. So in the beginning, I want you putting basketballs through the garden hose. I want you like putting widgets on the machine. And like, you know, it's like we're we're editing it. We're, we're getting a thumbnail for it. We're putting it on YouTube, right? We're writing the video, making the video, publishing the video. You do that by sitting in front of your camera just like you are right now. For those of you guys that can see this on video, like I'm sitting down at the same desk. I'm checking my emails, right? But I can also press record and do a video right here. Jeremy, you're, you look perfectly fine to crank out 25 videos right there in maybe two afternoons. Perfectly fine. Now, do you want to stay there in that system? I don't think so. I think that it's like, okay, your next 25, what, what can I do to spice it up? Should I buy a nicer camera? And that's the one thing I do. Or maybe for this next round, I'll, I'll um, add a lower third, uh, or maybe I'll add B-roll graphics. You, you know, uh, and then you won't do it. Maybe an editor will do it. But you pick one thing and you get better at it, and that's how you 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 build a system, right? You don't jump into the quality right away. Nobody cares. I've got friends in this industry. I hope they're not listening. I've got friends in this industry spending thousands of dollars per video for garbage content. It's just a bunch of loud noises. Uh, I'm excited about everything type of content. I'm I'm bright, shiny, blah, blah, blah. But this, this stuff couldn't hold my attention uh, for more than – it's like once the whiz bang is kind of like, oh, my gosh, what am I watching here? Um, I, I – Great content. Make great content. That's the first thing that we teach in our program is like how to structure. What's what's the process of a video, right? Like what are the elements that make up a video? There's five big things. And then we 
we, we, we teach you that model and you just, you make as many videos as you can with that model. And then you, you upgrade from there. Yeah, I think it's that time on task over time. You know, somebody put it to me one time that, you know, it's like, would you buy somebody that made a clay pot and they only, they spend all this time as one person making the clay pot, make it as best as they could, or would you want to buy the pot from, there's a group of people and they make several pots and they finally get to the, they get to the quality. The quality is always going to be found in the, in the quantity. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we're not talking about huge time commitments either. Like a, a solid video plan is two hours a week. Right. And that might even be like two hours and 30 minutes a week. Right. Where it's like 30 minutes on Monday, you decide, hey, okay, what am I going to shoot this week? Uh, it's maybe one or two videos. Maybe it's like one video that's going to be about five minutes long and then maybe two reels. Uh, two short vertical videos, and you're going to shoot those on Thursdays in your two-hour session. So on Thursdays, now you've got like two hours to kind of put notes together, like what I'm going to cover. Maybe that takes you at 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and then the last hour is you're you're just shooting it, you know? Um, and, you you know, that's it. Like that's that's your video marketing time. The next week, it's like 30 minutes on Monday. What am I shooting this week? And and you do it again, right? It's it's this rinse and repeat type of system um, that generates money, right? That generates calls and interest. And so you you get more excited to do it. Once you get your first batch of videos on the web and like people start responding, um, you, you kind of go, oh, I, I'd love to spend more time. Doing this. this is like actually generating leads for me. And what I love about that is, you know, it's, it's a time on task over time. So if you do three videos in a week and let's say you take a couple yes. of weeks off a year, that's 150 videos a year, 302 years. And that's without even amping it up. Maybe you decide to go three to five videos a week and it's good. more and, and more content. And get this, we don't publish it right away. Oh, they're going to kill me for saying this. Okay. I already said it. Cat's out of the bag. Um, you. <laughs> You, you, you don't have to publish these right away, right? So you stockpile, right? Like you're going to make videos for a month before even one of them goes public. And the reason that you do that is so that you're ahead of the game, right? So so I, I've got some clients that film once a month and they just film like brr, all of them, right? We have some clients fly into us. I don't know, like we have a nice studio here, but I think part of it's just like, hey, they're doing well. It's selling million dollar properties. Like let's, but- the point is you can film all of it and then front load it so that you're always a few weeks ahead, you know, and that, that takes a lot of pressure off your schedule. I yeah, love, love that. So why, why YouTube? I, I know you're a YouTube specialist. Uh, why YouTube first and foremost over some of the other platforms that are out there? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, for me personally, I've had a video camera in my hand since I was nine years old. You know, that was the year Nintendo came out, by the way. So great year, Nintendo great year. comes out. We had, yeah, we had Nintendo. We had two big Christmas presents that year as a Nintendo and a video camera. And I, you know, I played the Nintendo a little, but like the camera was my passion. It's stop motion Lego stuff. I would do like this dramatic, epic, like Barbie, you know, um, uh, videos with my little sister, like stuff that would go viral on YouTube today. I was just like so ahead of the game. But even as video cameras evolved and I got into sports and stuff, the high school theater, um, uh, we would do sketch comedy. And that's when I started like writing comedy. And I loved that and got into college. And like I said, I was a waiter for many years. And so after I'd wait table, I'd come home and I'd, I'd learn how to edit. And, and, and just for me, it was always like a hobby. It was like an art. Uh, and then, you know, there was one day where I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm going all in. Like video is a thing now. It's not just Hollywood. I grew up in LA. So it was like, you know, video was Hollywood. You had to go to Hollywood, you know. But all of a sudden it was like, wait a minute, like anybody can do video. So so for me, I had a passion for it. I, I was sort of a theater geek and I felt comfortable in front of people. And I, I feel like number one, I feel like I have a message. You, you know what I mean? Like I, I've not only been in this game my whole life, but but I've also overcome a ton of obstacles. I got four great kids. Uh, I'm a stepdad. I, I've beat cancer. And I want to share with people some of my experiences. And I think there's a lot of people listening today that want to share their experiences. So that's that's why I got involved. But why should you get involved? Okay, why why should you be on YouTube instead of um, Facebook group? I, I believe in Facebook groups. But it's like, but it's not the end all be all. That's that's a great supplement. Like, why YouTube instead of TikTok? I 
I believe in TikTok. I, I believe you should leave TikTok, actually move to Instagram before it gets banned nationwide. Um, I actually, I, I have a quarter million followers on TikTok and we left it because I don't think it's a good place to lay a future. Um, it's not reliable. It's not stable. Um, but I believe in Instagram, right? But why YouTube instead of Instagram? Number one, YouTube is hard. And most of your colleagues will not do it. And the hardest part about YouTube is not the editing. It's not the writing. It's looking at yourself on camera and it's sitting down every week and doing a video no matter what, right? That's the hardest part about it. YouTube is hard, which means you have a competitive advantage by doing it. Number two, YouTube is the only medium where eye contact and long form content come together to build relationships. Science calls them parasocial relationships. But I'm looking, Jeremy, at, at the camera right now. I'm not even looking at you. You're actually on the side right here. But I'm looking at you right now because I know that that's what's going to create a connection. I'm looking at the camera lens right now because I know that that's where I'm going to create a long-term connection with you, but also with the viewers who are watching the video version of this. That is, you cannot do that in short micro content verticals verticals are great i love reels i love shorts but that's not where you're going to build a long-term relationship that says i trust you with the investment of my next property or the sell a lot of you guys are going to get leads that are like i'm selling this property and buying a nicer one you know, it's like two commissions right you think any like you're going to come to the table and be like Oh, hey. Oh, uh, yeah. So real estate, bro. I got it. Ha. Right? You're not going to win over clients that way. But when you can make a, a professional presentation to your clients on a weekly basis, hey, I'm here to give you the, the spiel. You look them in the eyes. That's where you're going to create real lasting business. And so when it comes down to it, we have gone viral on every platform. I've gone viral on TikTok multiple times, um, Snapchat, um, even from way back in the day, Facebook for sure. Facebook's one of my biggest platforms. Um, Instagram, I got a video on Instagram right now at 504,000 views. That's just one of them. I've got, I've got others that are similar. Not all of them, but others. YouTube is where I invest my, my real marketing time, my real like building a future time. Um, because that's, even though we've experienced success on every platform, that's where the long lasting success comes from. Like that's where the leads and the business and the sales come from. Yeah. I, I love it too, because it's, it's searchable. Google owns it. People can find oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Where you do a reel or something like that. It's kind of like in the moment where YouTube it's, it's out there forever. I've got videos that are 10, 15 years old and, uh, they're just out still, there still around. Yeah. I, same thing. I, I've got videos from six, seven years ago that are still popping up in people's news feeds. Um, the videos you make today will be like big lead, lead generators for you next year. You'll make an ROI on them today. Okay. I want to be really clear about that because we're talking to real estate agents. You know, I, I, I can't be quite as confident with every industry, but with real estate agents, it's a slam dunk. Like we just know how that industry works. So, so when, when you, you make your ROI back, right, which, which, you know, pays for me, but also pays for the editors. Um, now, all of a sudden you're like, this is free, right? Um, you make another sale and then it's just like, you, you actually made profit on it. So you can feel confident in making your money back on whatever you're going to spend this year. Um, but next year, when that seasonal cycle comes around again, like, it's like all those videos come like the lead generation happens again. So you'll find that that cyclical nature uh, on YouTube. And that's what we try to create towards. We try to create towards the next season. I love that. So we've talked a lot about business and I, I want to switch gears just a little bit. Um, you, you've had a pretty big battle that you, you were a victor in and that's uh, defeating, defeating cancer. And I want you to talk a little bit about that journey, some of the things that you went through, uh, what you did to improve in your health and to overcome it. And how did it impact your business? Oh my gosh. Um, Big question. So, so, yeah, I know it's so, it's so much. So my cancer story begins in 2015 
Um, I was hustling to, I was still sort of knocking on doors and doing, uh, I, I wasn't doing only that. Like I had a guy doing that, but I was doing, um, more private consulting and coaching with bigger local businesses, but still had a camera in my hand and was still like, had to be at the shoot, had to shoot the video and then had to wrap it up and stuff. So I was, I was moving around a lot. I had three kids all under under four years old, five years old, uh, wow. maybe at the time. And I fell over, um, is the easiest way to put it. Uh, there was some pain leading up to it that I was sort of brushing aside and trying to ignore. But at one point I, you know, I just fell over and, and went to the hospital. Long story short, they've got a 12 centimeter tumor in my chest. It's called a thymoma. It's very rare, less than 3% of all cancers. So we did a surgery to remove it and uh, a year of aggressive chemotherapy and radiation, and it almost killed me. Um, I, I can't even begin to tell you to go through the, 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 the pain and torment of the chemotherapy uh, journey, which I believe is a barbaric and unnecessary cancer treatment. Um, it does not work. 97% of the time, if you did chemo and you're in the middle of it, like you can expect it to come back um, because chemo does not kill cancer stem cells at all, right? All it does is shrink tumors, right? Well, anybody can shrink tumors, but cancer stem cells are the roots, right? So, so what happened to me was four and a half years later, the cancer came back and that brings us up to current date. So two years ago, they told me, uh, they found my cancer. They say, your cancer's come back. Uh, it's stage four, it's terminal, and there's nothing you can do about it. They said, we don't even have a chemo for you. Um, funny, they said, we're going to give you chemo, but it's not going to work. Um, and so I'm just kind of like stunned and, I, you know, like terribly, terribly depressed. Um, it didn't mention a thing to my clients. You know, I'm sure they could see the, I looked sick, you know, that's what drove me into the hospital, right? It's like, something's not right here, right? Um, and deep down, I knew. Anyway, how it affected my business, you, you know, um, the first time it made me stronger, right? The first time I got cancer, I did chemotherapy. And so I was basically bald, sick and weak all the time. So I transitioned from shooting video to coaching video. And that was a big move for me because now I could reach a global audience, right? Like now, and, and it, it worked out extremely well. Um, I, I offered coaching. People already knew who I was. My first coaching programs were gangbusters. And it's like, we doubled our, our revenue in a year. And we bragged about it. We're like, man, cancer caused, because I'm a very positive guy. So it's like, you know, even though I was like weak and bald, and you can see my old videos, you'll see it, right? And it's like, but it's like, you know, we're going to power through, we're going to do it, you know? <laughs> you know, and like, but but people loved it. And they came into the program and I coached them, you know, uh, in between chemo schedules and it 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 built our company. Um, the second time I got cancer uh, was really devastating because they told me that there was no chance that I would live. And I believed them too, you know? Um, so I didn't tell my clients and I didn't tell anybody for 90 days. I do remember that the day that I was diagnosed, I came home and I called my good friend, Sean Cannell. And you guys might've heard of Sean Cannell. Sean Cannell runs a, a, a company called Think Media. Uh, one of the most just respected and, and uh, integrous guys in, I've ever met. Uh, Sean Cannell's a close friend. And I called him and I said, will you hire my wife when I die? And uh, he, he said, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not really what he said. You know, you, you, you know he was, I think, kind of stunned by the question. And he just like, whatever I can do, right? Um, so... All that to say the happy ending, right? Like that was two years ago. Um, when the doctors told me that I had two years left to live, I began a plant-based food approach to cancer care. And I rejected chemotherapy, radiation. And they didn't even offer me radiation, but you know, they're like, we can do chemo. 
They said chemo will make your life better. Uh, it's palliative. So I, I did three sessions of chemo. Um, and um, I, I was still working. I was still kind of like doing calls and going to chemo. And at once, some, I mean, the chemo made me feel terrible. And I was just like, why am I doing this? Like, if I've only got two years left, you know, like, so I began a, a whole foods plant-based approach. And within 90 days, I had shrunk my tumor load 30%. Amazing. And yeah, two years later, I started with nine tumors, stage four terminal diagnosis. After two years of living this lifestyle, I just got my first cancer-free test last week. That's awesome. So I'm very excited. Yes. And and I worked, I had clients the whole time. Our business has grown. After 90 days, I told everybody and 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 I said, I'm gonna grow my business. And I'm going to beat cancer and you can either watch me do it or you can be a part of this company and see it firsthand. And you know what? Like our clients, they loved it. I didn't lose a single client. Nobody was like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to cancel because, uh, you know, I want to give you your space to rest and heal. I didn't even tell anybody until after I had shrunk the tumors. And I was like, so if you want to leave me at my peak, go ahead. But but we're going to become the number one company in our space while beating cancer. We had a big fundraiser, did a whole bunch of stuff, and now I'm able to be here in front of you today cancer-free. And, and I feel like um, uh, that's been a big part of my journey is, is um, once I had to face my own death, building a company seemed a little bit easier. Yeah, quite a bit easier, right? Awesome. I, I love that. And, it, and I know I've, I've got some listeners that have been through this battle or in this battle. Uh, so thank well, you I for blog sharing. about it now. I have a YouTube channel now and you can go to beatcancerwithme.com and you can check out my website. Like I am very committed um, to share the message of metabolic cancer therapy, which is non-toxic cancer treatment. I believe that chemotherapy will be viewed as barbaric in the next five to 10 years. It's going to be one of those, whoops, we were wrong type of scenarios. And unfortunately, I'm going to be over here saying, I told you guys the whole time. Um, many people will lose aunts and uncles and cousins and friends because they will do chemotherapy and they will die. Then we're going to hear in 10, 15 years, oops, chemotherapy never worked. And, and I'm telling you guys, don't do it. Don't do it. There are better ways to fight cancer. And I'm healthier. Like, I'm healthier. There was never a time during my treatment where I felt like I was like worse, like chemotherapy made me feel worse. And I know we're going off topic here. So maybe we'll bring it back in. I love the life that I like good, healthy foods. I exercise and I'm, I'm 50, 60 pounds lighter than I used to be. You know what I mean? It's just like at the end of the day, cancer was a signal to me that I was living my life out of balance and I got my life in balance. Um, I work now during work hours. And when I'm not at work, man, I'm, I'm enjoying my kids and my freedom and putting my feet in the grass a little bit more. Man, that leads me right to my next question. You did that perfect. Um, I, you know, I saw this post recently and I'm going to read it. I want to make sure I get it right. It says I'm in the zone right now. I just beat cancer without chemo. My business is thriving. My marriage is amazing. And every moment is a victory lap. Could you share share with the audience listening today, like why it's important to to share our gratitude? Oh, first of all, my good buddy Ben Azadi calls it vitamin G, gratitude. And um, you know, I'm a man of faith. Um, I believe, and I, I believe in, and I honor and walk with the Lord on a daily basis. And I'm so grateful for that because that's not that hasn't always been a part of my life. Um. And I have someone to be grateful to. I can say, like, to this person who created me, thank you for this wife and this family. But even if you're not a believer, right, we should find things to be grateful for. Because when you are accessing gratitude, your body chemicals change. And it's fascinating. It's fascinating. You know how we hear like, oh, my grandmother talks to plants. She swears by it, right? Or like, I know this guy who plays music for plants. Um, not only are these accurate studies, but like the same is true for how we talk to ourselves 
and how others hear us speak. And the nature of, of being grateful is a recognition that you are not in control. And I feel like we, because I'm a control freak, right? And so one of the big things I had to learn is like what I can control. Like I can control my mic, Jeremy, and I can control my set and what appears on set. I can even control what I say to my prospects and to my leads when they call me on the phone. I can control what I say. I can't control what they hear. I can't control what how they respond. And I've had to learn these things. I've had, even as an adult, you know, and I have found that making space for gratitude on a daily basis, you start your day with three things that you're grateful for. Write them on your bathroom mirror. I keep a black marker in my toothbrush holder so that I can, in fact, it's the only thing in my toothbrush holder because I use an electric toothbrush, but I, I have it there just to write on my mirror. I have another black marker by my mirror in my downstairs sort of workout area. And I have another black marker in my sauna so I can write on my sauna mirror door. It's so important to wake up in the morning, whether you start in the gym, whether you start in the bathroom or whether you start in the sauna, that it's like three things I'm grateful for because it's a recognition that like it's you and your efforts for sure. But it's also like other things outside of your control and that stimulates all of these healthy vibes in your body all these healthy hormones release, it decreases cortisol, it increases some of the love hormones that you feel when you're petting a puppy or or, or snuggling with, with your spouse, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it makes me, it makes me a better business person, it makes me ready for the day. That's, that's awesome and amen. Um, somebody's <laughs> listening today and they're they're thinking about either start starting to make videos for their business, or maybe, maybe they have a, a personal battle like you've gone through in your life. Like what's one piece of advice you could leave them today facing either one of them? You are capable of more than you know. You are capable of more than you have yet accomplished and your best is yet to come. I, I believe that about everybody. I also believe that most people don't believe that and so they do not aspire. And that is unfortunate, you know, because I've, look, I've heard it. I'm, especially in my place, I have cancer or I, my, let me tell you guys, my, my, the greatest man I've ever met, one of my closest friends in the world is a chiropractor, broke his neck mountain biking. And I had just finished his videos the day before, the day before we met at Starbucks and I showed him the videos I made for him. The next day, he went mountain biking, broke his neck, quadriplegic ever since. It's been 12 years. He is more successful now than he ever was as a chiropractor. Actually runs a chiropractic marketing firm. If he had believed that the best was behind him, he never would have accomplished what he set out to do, what he, what he has done now. And yes, he went through the depression and the angst and like all the mourning of uh, the, the lamentation of losing your ability to everything. And yet he still found hope and he still achieved because he believed that somehow, some way, his best was yet to come. And that's what I believe about everybody. I really do. I, I, there's nobody, it, you know, it's, will you step into it? Right. It's, will you say, I'm going to excel despite my leaky gut, despite my depression, despite my, my overweight, my ugly face, my stupid mind, all the things we say to each other. We say to ourselves in the mirror, right? I'm too skinny. I'm too pimply. Right. I believe you'll excel no matter what. I believe your best is yet to come. And when I meet people like that's what I want to tap into. I want to tap into like, hey, wh what's the dream? What's the vision you forgot about? What's the dream? What's the vision that that your broker told you to forget about? Right. Let's let's put that at the forefront and let's start building the brand that you set out to build when you first started this thing. That's the thing that I love about it is like getting into that. I want to be the realtor who's like on every billboard. It's like, well, billboards may not be the thing anymore, but it's on everybody's phone. Let's do that. Let's make that a reality. 
what a be- what a beautiful story and beautiful advice. I, I truly believe that as well. And and as you mentioned, you have to step into it, right? There's we've got to do our part as as well. So Owen, you know, people are listening today, uh, maybe inspired by your story, or they're thinking, hey, I want to learn more about how to do video or how I can plug into some of the services that you you offer. What is the best way to connect with you? Yeah, go to owenvideo.com slash video. Owenvideo.com slash video and get my YouTube checklist. And, and here's why. I don't really need your email, okay? We don't really aggressively email market. So it's not like a lead generator. But this is how you get in touch with me and my community is, is through that initial opt-in. So I want you to opt in to, to my email list and tell me who you are. Tell me a little bit about your business. I'm going to send you a guide, but I'm also going to send you sort of like how to get involved, how to like just be a part of what we're doing. We have a Thursday training that will blow your mind. Some of the biggest YouTubers in the space and their channel managers come in and and, and talk with our group. And we share a different skill set every Thursday. It's like, here's here's how to you know, upload better. And here's how to make better eye contact. And here's four good cameras that you should look at getting right. We're increasing your skills, you know, all the time. And so I want to encourage you to like, be a part of like, get onto our list, like find out who we are. And if you, if you hate it, unsubscribe and, and no, no harm, no foul, but I hope to be one of your favorite spots online to visit would be my channel or my Facebook group. So check it out. Oh, and thank you again for taking the time today. Uh, amazing, amazing information. Love the strategies that you shared. Uh, love that you're willing to, to dive into some of the stuff that happened in your personal life, because I think those that are listening, there's going to be somebody out there that you changed today. And even if it's one, all that really matters. So, Owen, oh, thank yeah, you all I need for is taking one. that time. Exactly. All I need is one. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me, Jeremy. It was great to meet you guys. And I, I hope to meet some of you online. Awesome. Until next time, onward and upward. Thank <laughs> you.